as we can, but I'll, I'll let you guys know. There is a lot of content that we've got to go through, but I think all of it is uh, going to be in the interest of, of helping our students. So um, we've got a timer up here that's going to try to keep us on 45 minutes, uh, and I'll try to get through. Uh, I'll try to get through it in, in that time. So last uh, last month, create this here. Last month, South Cobb sent a group of us, uh, Mr. Perry. Dr. Quayle, uh, Ms. Backers, Mr. Joseph, Ms. Edgar, Ms. Cordes, and I to uh, Phoenix, Arizona to attend a PLC Summit, Professional Learning Community, which is, of course, CCCs. Uh, and we went for a, a few days, and we decided that when we came back, um, that it would be really smart for us to get our takeaways together uh, so that we can kind of share what our plan for South Cobb is, what we noticed, uh, some things that we were already doing in our CCCs, uh, and some things that we, we, we might need to improve on. Um, so let me first start by prefacing that in this um, event that we went to, we were in different breakout sessions. So each of us kind of have our own expertise um, in these sections. And so if I cannot answer a question or I don't feel, or you don't feel like the answer that you get from me is what you were looking for, I do suggest that you reach out to whether it be Edgar's, Backers, or Cordette's. We all went. So again, if you're not happy or I can't answer your question, I would reach out to, to them. So the first thing we, we, we want to look at, um, and one thing that I really appreciated about this presentation that we went to, is it didn't just focus on what teachers were doing inside the classroom with their students. They took a really holistic approach to, to teaching. Um, so they wanted us, and, and I kind of want to start with you guys, and, and there should be a, a set of sticky notes on your desk. You can just take one, not everybody has to do one, just have one person write for, for your group. And just, what do you guys see in this picture? What, what, are, we, what are we looking at here? Write down um, some things that you're noticing, some emotions that you might be, uh, that you think might be happening in this, um, in this picture. What are we seeing? So what do we, let, let's share out, what are, what are some things, I heard some, some over here with uh, Amber's group, what are some things that you guys have written down? I wrote down kids of different ages. Okay. Um, we said the baby was four to six months. That baby on the left out there right now, yet she's grinning the happiest. And then the right baby is just like a little future model. A little future model? Yep. I like it. What do you say, Mr. Morris? I've got togetherness, recognition, happiness, and sisterhood. Awesome. Uh, go ahead. Um, from a size standpoint, I would say the baby looks like he's formed, he or she has formed an attachment to the sister in the pink, and he's reaching out to her for safety and comfort. Awesome. Good. So I'm gonna I'm gonna click on to the to the next slide, which is gonna talk about what a PLC is. Then um, we're going to look at a um, at a one of the, the breakout sessions, and I'll kind of talk about why why we showed this picture uh, when when we get there. So just keep this picture in mind, kind of as we are as as we're going here. So talking about what is a PLC. Remember, uh, we already use PLCs here. We just call them something different. We call them CCCs. So most of, our, most of us are already familiar uh, with what a CCC is. 
Um, but it is a never-ending process in which educators commit to working together to ensure high levels of education for students. And I really like the, the verbing and the wording in this one here. Um, it is a never-ending process in which educators, we, come together to ensure higher levels of education for students, right? So it really gives us a mission and a goal here. Uh, the mission of PLCs, or again, CCCs, are to ensure that all stu uh, students learn at grade level or higher. One thing that we recognized when we went to this PLC uh, convention was that a mission is really important for us so that we know where we're going. And so we kind of stepped back and decided that we needed to redefine what our mission was so that it was attainable. It was something that we could reach for. So, and this is something that, that, that's pretty obtainable, something that we know what we're looking for. Students who are learning at grade level or higher. We can achieve this learning together our students learn more when we learn more. That's, that's nothing that, that I have to tell you guys. Again, something that I really appreciated from this PLC that we went to is that it was really, really heavy in their data. They never just presented us something and, and expected us to understand it or to just take it at street value. They always are giving us their, their research and so, um, uh, Rick DeFore was one of the people who kind of started the process, as was uh, Mike Maddos, and so we're just citing uh, their work there. So now we're quickly going to talk about um, educator wellness. And we know that happy teacher outside brings happy teacher inside, happy teacher inside, happy students. So, and, and this is something that I am guilty of even myself, not prioritizing my own health and, and well-being. And so when I, I didn't attend this session, I attended another one that touched on some of these topics, I really kind of came back and said, okay, I have to do some things differently so that I do not get burnt out, so that I can make sure I'm arriving every day being the person that my kids need me to be. So we see here it says, school is like the four seasons, waves of time that we experience through the school year. Um, and something that we need to think about is what would help us feel better as we move through the school year. So some of those pictures and some or those pictures that we saw earlier, some of those things that you guys wrote down, happiness, togetherness, what were, what were some of the other adjectives that we, that we used? Recognition, right? These are all, um, especially, I like that one, recognition and, and togetherness, right? Is something that we all strive for. So I want you guys to, to take a second and think of this. What would help us feel better as we move through, uh, as we move through the year? Um, and we're gonna look at some things um, and actually some strategies. So if you guys want to, you can jot some notes down or even take pictures of the slides uh, that are coming up here, because they even give you uh, some strategies that might uh, that you guys might be able to employ in your classrooms. Uh, so come up uh, with a, uh, a song or uh, or just play music in your classroom. So um, surviving the season, right? If your your kids are having uh, a bad day, um, we've got some recommendations for some songs there. Dealing with disillusionment, we've got some songs there. For you, I know that in my own classroom, every time before we, we take a test, I play uh, Take It Easy by the Eagles to remind my students that it is just one test, and even if you don't do as well as you want to on this test, that we provide time for remediation, and that it will be okay, and the world will move on. And my students, they appreciated that, and even if I've forgotten on days where we test, they're like, whoa, 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 Mr. Amoroso, we gotta play our song and we're not ready. Um, so, uh, and I like these last questions here, this last question, what are you willing to try to see if it works for you? Um, so, I always encourage, go out into other cl teachers' classrooms and see uh, 
what type of things they are doing inside their own classroom, not only for student wellness, but for educator wellness too. I'm only year two, right? You guys, I got, you guys got nothing on me. I, I, I cannot speak up here about feeling tired or worn down, but I know that I'm sure there are some of you that are feeling that way. Um, and definitely taking these things into consideration gave me some ideas of how to prevent some of that burnout, some of that stress. So reminders, drink water, are you hydrated? Use the power of laughter. I know it's special, like we're real good at that in social studies as I, as I walk around and, and listen to some of you guys, how we interact with our students, how we, we talk with each other. We use humor in our department. I'm sure it's the same in, in others. Um, We've got altruism and gratitude, speaking kindness, right? I think Mr. Perry has really been trying to get us to um, kind of have this mindset. I like when he talks about uh, being in customer service and that we have to uh, sell it with a, with a smile. I always keep that in mind when we talk about uh, altruism and uh, gratitude here. Uh, then, of course, you've got to keep your mindfulness. You have to um, help keep your emotions in balance. Uh, breathing exercises, uh, they can interrupt the worries of the past, keep you aligned to the future. And this, one, that, this last one here is always important, something that I'm guilty of not doing uh, either. Take 15 minutes a day just for you to see what you can do for yourself or for someone else. Um, Another one, no internet or screens. Um, and think of something that you are looking forward to. I know lately I've been trying to stay off my screen uh, a lot more than, than I have been uh, in the past as I, as I look through my phone now to make sure I'm getting everything. But, um, so some questions, and, and, and again, I really appreciated that this PLC did not just focus on, again, what we do in the classroom, but how what we do outside the classroom impacts us so greatly. So uh, some questions here, are you having your best life? A teacher's wellness has a direct impact on student achievement. We don't just say that because we believe it, right? We say that because that's what the data tells us. Uh, and we need to worry about self and personal care, your physical. Um, make sure that you are eating. I, those of you who know in my department, no problem. I don't do that. I don't eat enough. Well, some of some of us might, right? Sleep, movement, especially with the with the time change. I know that still has me messed up. Uh, and then your mental needed to engage others and do uh, your job well. Um, on average, and some of these uh, some of these statistics down here. I'm actually not going to read through them. If you want to take a second, um, you can read through some of these statistics down here. Uh, but I guess to, to kind of end this, or, or to, to uh, end this wellness session here, um, we have to be concerned if we are living our best life. We cannot ask our students to live their best lives, to be authentic for us, if we cannot walk into our classrooms every day and be authentic for them. Uh, and of course, our emotional health is something we need to uh, work on as well, so we don't yell or stab or throw children out of the classroom. No, no, don't, don't, don't say stab. No. <laughs> Trust me, you're, you're not going to go there. Um, and then, of course, just be mindful um, of, of how your emotions can impact student cognition, right? Even if we don't perceive it in that way, we do not know the lived experiences of our students. And it is okay that we come to different conclusions. Mm -hmm. That is okay. It matters how the conversation is had. The student will find their way, right? We found our way. It matters how the conversation is had. Uh, and then social. Being uh, intentional with others, go out, do things. Don't just uh, school and home, right? We have to make sure that we are uh, that we are trusting in in others, and we are building relationships with those in and outside of our teams. Uh, I like this one here. Burnout is threatening this success, right? We are our students' best 
uh, tools in their tool belt. And if we are getting to our wits end, they don't have the sharpest tools in, in their belt. So take a second and, and think for yourselves, maybe discuss this amongst your group here. Are you living your best life? What did you do for yourself this week? And what are you planning to do for yourself in the coming weeks? If any of your answers are nothing here, try to think of what you can do in the future for yourself. Just take a second, we'll, sh we'll, sh we'll share out. Mr. Bernard, eat a vegetable. So far, uh, last week was a blur. I know last night was a blur. We were here, <laughs> Mr. Perriman and I, till, didn't get on till 11 o'clock because the soccer game last night. So, and then the time changed, so it's like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm tired. So what are you gonna do for yourself in the, in the coming week then? I, I think what I'm, I, you know, and I, I, I was having this conversation with myself this morning, and um, I was telling Mr. Perriman, my neighbor, who was next door, we took him to the hospital because he got sick and brought him home, and he passed away on Friday. And so, and I was just thinking to myself, and I was saying, you know what? I need to, I need to do the things that I always want to, to do that bucket list because I could not be around to enjoy it. And I was thinking I'm the one more work way to work this morning. I was just I was saying, okay, so I want to go to Alaska to go gold panning. Well I need to start planning that trip. You know, forget the excuses if the wife say no I ain't going out there in the woods and let me <laughs> but you gotta stay home because I got to do this right here. You know what I mean? And so just those type conversations I had with myself this morning, that I need to start living my best life. Don't, don't you think as teachers, we get, we, we talk about doing things for ourselves, but inevitably what happens? It gets mixed in with the job, because mm -hmm. the job is so all encompassing. Mm -hmm. So like I'll have this conversation with my wife a lot, kind of the same, the same ideas. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, she's like, well, that's part of your job. And I'm like, well, no, it's not. And you lose sight of the fact that, yeah, it is part of your job because the two just constantly are encroaching upon each other. So you have to have, and again, I'm, I'm terrible at it. I'm absolutely Me terrible. I'm, I'm more happy doing stuff for the job and making sure. He like, is. I see him yeah. out there all hours of the night. But, but the thing is, we've got to figure out a way to have a rigid divide between mm -hmm. the two, almost like a Jekyll and Hyde, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's really, really challenging to do, I think, as teachers, especially with the way the occupation is moving, you know, so. so cool. um, well, yeah. teachers, because, just because of it, we are pleasers, we're, mm -hmm. we're accommodators, we are, and, and that's kind of a natural progression of, of who we are, that we became teachers, and so what happens is taking care of others becomes our priority mm -hmm. and we forget that we're an other too and and it it, it kind of gets lost <coughs> in that translation and that's something i personally am working on very hard and it's really hard to change at this age well it's, it's like they tell you if, if you lose uh, cabin pressure and, and a little mass come down 
when you're sitting with someone, they tell you put on your mask first. Mm -hmm. Right. Because yeah. you can't take care of yourself, you're not going to be able to take care of anybody else. That, is, that was one of the biggest examples that they gave in this in this conference. It was was that exact one. When the, when the cabin pressure changes, you save yourself first, so you, then you can help everybody else. Um, personal example from just the last couple of days, my dad was in the hospital and I find myself feeling guilty for not being here. So, um, and I, I had to stop and think like, like this is the most important man in my life and I'm worried about, are the kids getting to work? Is the sub there? Like, I shouldn't be worried about that at that moment. But like, while I'm trying to make sure he's okay, I wanna make sure they're okay too. And like you said, at some point, and I've been trying to work on this for the last five years and it's hard for me because I do love what I do. Mm -hmm. Putting that line there and keeping it there. Because we'll put it there for a little while and then we'll fudge it. <laughs> we'll go right back to doing what we were doing and we'll have to stop and say, man, I got to get back to, okay, leaving this and leaving, you know, putting these two things separate. But because of how, who most of us are, we do this for a reason. And, and to that, I think, you know, I feel like a lot of our PDs have very similar messages. You know, we have to take care of ourselves. This is what we can do for our students. And, and I think that we need this constant reminder, right? Because like Perryman said, maybe at the beginning of the semester if we do that, then as we get more and more entrenched in our students' lives in the content, that kind of falls apart, right? So I think it is important that we remind ourselves frequently just how important we are, not only for ourselves, but for our students. So many of us in here form really strong bonds with our students that our students' lives would not be the same if we didn't show up for Absolutely. school the next day. Absolutely. And we forget that. I'll click on here. Uh, so now we're gonna talk about embracing the five vessels, learning the non-negotiables, becoming a high-functioning CCC. And yes, I said a high-functioning CCC because we have some really great functioning CCCs right now, we just have to cross over that finish line. We need to get to where we are to where we need to be. Luckily, we're, we're moving that way. So the first thing that I want you guys to do is we are gonna spend just a minute here and I want you guys to rank the five non-negotiables in, by importance. So at the top, Give me which of these five you think are most important. The last will give the least important. And then we'll kind of talk about them, talk about how South Cobb is already doing these versus where we need to move on to. Uh, if you guys would, um, try to take a second, you want them to do it with their CCC? Try to get with at least a, a couple members of your CCC, and we'll try to rank these together, and we'll put them, uh, our ranking and our CCCs on the board. So if you're in world history, uh, pick, a, pick a, a sticky note. If you're in US history, pick a sticky note. Who else is in here? World languages? Right? Pick a sticky note. I don't know who else is in here. I'm sorry. Pick a sticky note and we'll rank uh, we'll rank these importance here. And there are markers on the table. There are markers on the table. Give me your CCC name and then you can give me the number. Yeah. Yeah, I 
you guys list your list in that particular order? Because, because All right, I'll take it. All right, um, put two first because, again, the idea of having your curriculum priority standards, um, you can't do anything unless you know what your end goal is to start with. Um, and from there, then you go to three because three, your common assessment is where you can see did you meet it? And again, that's where you can go into one where mm -hmm. All right, my kids did well on this part of the standard. Yours did well on this part. All right, what are you doing? So then we can compare. So that's that collateral responsibility to make sure that all the kids are learning. Uh, four and five, um, kind of flip flop on um, the order, but um, idea of the systematic uh, process again, intervening, um, intervention um, for the end result. So how you know we've done all this. Like now, how can we get them at the end to this point? Because everything else we did didn't work, so now how do we work on it? So that's why I tend to put five is kind of like, nat it's naturally that's the end thing is what do we do after all this is done? What do we do? Awesome. Um, you guys want to, do you want to explain yours? Okay. Yeah, I'll go for so on one, we, we pretty much left it in the same one. First of all, we, if we're talking as a CC, we got to be able to work together to create whatever that curriculum is basically going to be. Once we define the curriculum and we have all of that in place, as we go through the teaching and we go through these assessments in the process, uh, then once we give the assessments, use those results of the assessments 
to improve or help each individual student to be able to improve in whatever area they need to be, which is helpful to be different for different students. <coughs> and then the school provides a systematic process you know, to fully to fully in and just giving them those uh, those improvements to how are we going to what are we going to how are we going to implement a system to help them to improve while we actually intervene with the, the data that we receive. Exactly. So I see most of us either had you know one or two as, as our starting point, right? You need to know what we're going to teach before we know how we're going to assess it. And so I, what I highlighted in, in red here uh, were ways that we either the county or us at South Cobb are already fulfilling these five vessels, right? So educators will work in collaborative teams. Those are our CCCs and take collective responsibility for learning. That's the main goal for that one, the main word, collective responsibility. CCCs will implement a um, guaranteed and viable curriculum. Thankfully, that is done through our priority standards. So that's not really anything that we even have to worry about doing. Uh, CCCs monitor <coughs> learning through an ongoing assessment process that includes frequent team-developed common formative assessments. I don't want to call out any CCCs here, but just think. Does your CCC actually do a common formative assessment? We all know we do common summative assessments, right? We give the same test at the end of the unit, but do you give at least one formative assessment in each unit that is the same? You are your alone CCC. She's <laughs> <laughs> the only one in her CCC. <laughs> Um, so I know that for my CCC, that is something that we have to focus on. And I'm actually going to show you guys what a plan, what a unit would look like where we have some scheduled common formative assessments. Uh, but we're also focusing on uh, the results, right? We are data driven. That is nothing that I have to tell you guys. That has been driven in our head like a nail, right? We are data driven here at South Cobb. And then number five, schools provide a systematic process for intervention. Luckily, we have SOAR, we have Inmentum, we do tutoring. I think this school does a phenomenal job at number five, offering these interventions and enrichment. We just need to make sure that we're employing them and that our students are using them and they know about them. So we should have a focus on learning, right? These are going to be, uh, these are questions that none of us should be unfamiliar with. Uh, what do we want all our students to learn? How do we know if they learned it, right? That is our common formative assessment. How do we respond when learning has not occurred versus how do we, occur, uh, how do we respond when learning has occurred? If I'm gonna be real honest, just by what I've seen, I think we do a far better job here than we do here. I think, uh, I'm guilty of it, I need a little bit more for that enrichment. For my students who are already there, what can I give them to enrich that ex in experience, right? Get them from here to up here. And of course, why are learning targets essential? Because we know that our academic coaches, right, as they're going around, as they're touring the school, as they're going in the classroom, as admins are doing the same, they're going in there and they're looking for our learning targets. Not just to make sure that we have something done, but because there is a, uh, something mean meaningful behind those learning targets. Uh, so I liked uh, Dr. Cruz, uh, who I attended his uh, breakout, explained that learning targets are kind of like the wedges of an orange, right? How many of you get an orange and just eat it like that? If you do, you are a madman, right? You first have to, you have to unpeel the orange. The county has already unpeeled the orange for us. They've unpeeled it and showed us what our priority standard is. How many of you picked up that orange and just eat it without doing anything else to it? Right? We peel the wedges. We are unpacking our standards. What do we know? What do we want our students to learn from these standards? How are we going to do it? When are we going to assess those standards? Right? Those are all things that we have choice over. I really like this image here. Uh, this shows what an effective assessment plan in each CCC for each unit could look like. So as a team, we come together 
and we form our common uh, end of unit assessment. That is your common formative assessment. I'm sorry, your summative. Then you'll come in, and it doesn't always have to be two. Sometimes it can just be one. You'll come together as a team and decide on a common formative assessment. Then, throughout the unit, as an individual teacher, you plan all of the other formative assessments that you have in your class, whether it's a warm-up, whether it's a worksheet, whether it's a reading. Uh, as a, again, as a team, CCCs plan a summative assessment. As a team, during the unit, CCC should plan for common and formative assessments to check for student learning. One thing that I wanted to stress with these common and formative assessments is that they can be something as simple as an exit ticket or an informal warm-up. It doesn't need to be something structured. It doesn't need to be a worksheet that everybody gives. It can be something very quick and informal, as long as everybody is doing it, so at the end of the day, we can come and say, hey, my students didn't understand this. How did yours do? What did you do? What did I do? So that I can address it the next day. Not after the unit is over and we're ready to move on the next day, before the summative uh, test is even taken. And then, of, of course, as a teacher, you give your formative assessments to gauge learning on a day-to-day -day basis. Right? And now we're going to be talking about assessments here. Uh, and assessments, they are the engine, right? That is where we're getting the majority of our data from. Assessment practices must build hope, efficiency, and achievement for learners and teachers. Um, our key question that we all, I think, answer or are, or, or are um, forced to answer sometimes or how do we help our students handle the pressure of assessments. So do you guys have any strategies? I've already shared mine with you. You know, I play, like I said, uh, take it easy from the Eagles before we, we start testing. Is there any other strategies or rituals that you guys have in your classroom that you guys go through before you test? Prayer. <laughs> some some <laughs> might, right? Some time. might bow their heads and pray a little bit. Can't leave. Yeah. Um, but our <laughs> assessment practices should build um, our students and our learners' coat of armor. And I, and I kind of like this acronym here. We've got confidence, optimism, <coughs> tenacity, enthusiasm. Your students' coat of armor. Uh, remember, there is a human being at the end of every assessment that is going to have a, an emotional response, whether that is positive or negative. Assessment is merely a means to gather evidence about learning. It is the use of evidence that distinguishes the formative from the summative. I'm going to say that again. It is the use of evidence that distinguishes the formative from the summative. Uh, so uh, assessment should help students answer the questions, what are the common misunderstandings my learners have? How will I know if those misunderstandings are emerging? How will, uh, how will I do instructionally, or what will I do instructionally when the misunderstandings begin to emerge? And the um, assessment purpose, both formative and summative, must be to interpret and to maximize learning and verify achievement, right? So again, we are data driven. Everything that we're doing is built on data, whether that is coming from summative data or formative data. Um, so common formative assessments, we know those are faster and shorter uh, to implement and score quicker data to address. Uh, those can lead to action. They'll inform your next steps. What do I need to do to address this as a warm-up or as an exit ticket? Uh, your goal, more structure and efficiency. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about uh, helping students gain reputations as learners. And I've only got about nine slides left, so thank you guys for, for staying with me here. Uh, we, we're getting through this. Um, 
So it's, of course it starts with us first. That's nothing that I think I, ha I had to tell you guys, right? The learning starts with us. Uh, we have to use our studying practices, um, collective teacher efficacy, again, as a CCC, as a PLC, we are focusing on collaboration. Uh, the use of our four critical questions of learning, uh, I can go back to those if, if need be, but uh, I think we're familiar with our four questions of learning. We're gonna use the four questions to determine uh, their mastery uh, and um, if where we can move on, if we can move on from them. Uh, or if we need to add instruction, give remediation, so on and so forth. Uh, so what is your why? Um, a strategy gives you an effect uh, side, but without the why, you're not going to get people to buy in, right? So we can say that we want our students to learn, but if we don't have that why we want our students to learn, we're not, we're not doing anything, we're just spinning our wheels. So tell students why the learning target is important. Why it, or what has value to you as the educator. Uh, use statements of relevance, examples. Here's why you're required to learn this today why it matters, this is what success in this particular unit standard looks like. Consider adding relevant statements to big tasks or even at the end of units. Um, give examples and actions and a why to consider. I know that it's probably a lot easier in, you know, I'm, I'm looking at my social studies colleagues here, it's probably a lot easier, at, at least for me, because that's where my mind is in social studies, right, to always say a why understand our future, our current, we have to understand our past. That's an easy why. Um, math, CTA people, that's a pretty easy why too. World languages, that's an easy why. Um, and so let them know that, right? You got into the, into the profession for a certain reason, you should be able to share that um, enthusiasm with them. Give them your why. Consider creating one relevant uh, statement sheet for the unit, um, bold essential standards, unpacking bullets, uh, doing tasks. Uh, gather evidence is something kids can do too. Um, and this is actually something I'll, I'll call out, uh, Miss Justy actually does a pretty good job at having students gathering evidence about their own learning. I know that when she has a review uh, Ms. Justy uses like a little stoplight analogy about where the student's learning is and they tell her that. This is where I feel like I am. And I think that's a really valuable tool. Um, several times a week, uh, students can be moving from uh, different types of tasks. Uh, we're all learners here and we don't get to finish the, uh, the line at the same time, but it all matters that we finish, right? It doesn't matter where you start, as long as we all get past that finishing line. Uh, so when we're uh, talking about collaboration tools for learning teams, not necessarily just for our students, uh, but as teams, uh, one of our big things that we want to look at is revisit your personalities, right? We know that we have certain norms within a CCC. So if you know that, um, or I'm sorry, certain roles within a CCC. If you know that a personality best fit that role, then make sure that that, that person is, is in, that, in that role that fits their personality. Talk about the norms of your CCC. Create an essential standards chart. Although again, this, the county has already done that for us with uh, priority standards. Choose roles based on, prior, uh, based on personality and collaborative teams should be in groups of five or less. But let me also tell this to you guys, because this was something that I did not think about when I was in Arizona. As a CCC, we are not just the world history teachers that we are with. As a CCC, it is the entire school that works together as a CCC moving towards student engagement, moving towards student success. That is something that I really didn't think about, how we all together work as one CCC. So again, norms should be specific to each team member. Norms ensure that meetings are productive for your, um, and making sure that the needs are being met. Um, you might even wanna list your pet peeves and, and 
and things that you would not want to see in your CCC, right? This is yours uh, to, to form for your students. Um, are we willing to redo our norms to have all members buy in to our CCC process? If you're ignoring your norms, uh, you are ignoring your needs. If they are not being met, speak up and address them. Silence essentially means you're okay with it. Um, an essential standards chart, items to share with your students every unit, um, for teachers to see how we are together, right, where we're moving together, that can help us plan in advance, and um, then we're talking about um, why it matters that we, uh, or, or that we're building this uh, collaboration, right? Um, we know that as teachers, um, we usually use best practices, right? And so as a team, we can collaborate and figure out and come to a consensus about what our best practices are. And here we go, I'm almost done, I promise. I promise, promise. Um, the person who opposes the decision should speak up during the meeting, but a person may not feel safe, but can reach out to that person and see if that person is willing to share or support. Basically what we're saying here is, if your CCC isn't working out, right, you just haven't felt the success of your CCC, my suggestion to you would be, reach out to some of us, especially those of us who went on that PLC trip, but also talk to your admin about what CCCs are highly effective to maybe send one or two teachers to see what an effective CCC looks like, or even chat, hey, how do you handle something like this in a CCC? How do you guys discuss data, discuss formative assessments, common assessments? Um, you know, again, we are all one CCC. We want to ensure that everyone is heard um, prior to moving forward so that we all know what we're moving forward to. I think we've got a quick video here uh, about what a CCC should not look like. I can find my mouse here. I was on this date the other night, and um, we were at this restaurant. All right, guys, you guys ready to get started? Hang on a second. Uh, Trip, you ready to get started? Okay. okay. Hey, you guys, we're all here. We should start. All right. Uh, thanks for coming, guys. I just wanted to take a few minutes and talk about some ideas for the marketing strategy this year. So, if you got one, just throw it out there. Yeah, um, how long are this meeting supposed to last? The schedule wasn't exactly clear. Should be out here in 30. Is that approximate? Yeah, or? Hey guys, starting a couple minutes late, got caught in traffic. Seven minutes, actually. Okay. A couple of two. That's so what we're doing, is we're just coming up with some ideas for our new marketing strategy. Sure. Anyone? I think we should implement Pinterest. Ooh, that's a fun idea. What about a publicity event in the park? Interesting. But how are you going to plan around the weather? What if it rains? So we'll party in the rain. Okay, just want to emphasize there's no bad ideas here. We're just brainstorming. So yeah, I'm just really thinking it'll be a huge waste of money to try to plan around the winter. Yeah, okay, we get your concerns. Nancy, thank you. Okay, um, anyone else have an idea? Ephraim. I've always wanted to see rain fall down all at once in a big splash instead of small drops over time. I mean, think how it could impact the irrigation system. Okay. Okay. Well, um, I have an idea from my previous job that I had last year. Um, let me take that back a little bit. I have this wonderful idea that it doesn't really make sense unless I just take it and try to stick it and then bring it forward together. It was like three weeks ago that I remember oh, he said whoa. something that I couldn't understand. Hold on, Sam, Jerry. Hold on. Thanks for pointing. Here's what we need to do. Okay. Uh, Lauren, you got this? We do a video submission contest on YouTube. Oh, okay. that's been it'll be on Facebook, it'll be on Pinterest, it'll be on Twitter. We're using the new technology, we do the senior demographics. So, uh, you guys want to see an example? Should we be moving on to the next topics? I mean, uh, it's already quarter after. Ah, quarter after. That's funny. Uh, who knows how to put this on the screen? Up there, because you're not going to, I want you to see all the details. Do we have cables? Does this cable work? Who knows? Power. I, don't, I don't know if on the TV there's an HDMI. That's not going to be on. Is that remote? Go to the TV. 
Plenty of time, guys. We're working. I got a great model. Wait. Turn the world off. Okay. I got it working. Hit play. Okay. 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 Okay.